Good afternoon. Welcome, everyone. Could you please be seated? Thank you. I'm Dr. Jane Carrero, the Vice President for Health Affairs at the University of New England and Dean of our College of Osteopathic Medicine. What row? Welcome to our 26th annual White Coat Ceremony. This is the 46th entering class. I'd like to extend an especially warm welcome to the friends and family members of the students, many of whom have traveled long distances to join us for today's celebration. Thank you. Thank you. Um, early this morning, there was an earthquake in Morocco. And as many of you know, we have a campus in Morocco. Um, fortunately, our faculty and students and our staff are very safe. Um, but I would like us to just take a moment uh, to remember them. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to recognize the members of our platform party, Dr. James Herbert, President of the University of New England, Dr. Jody Herman, President of the Maine Osteopathic Association and of the Unicom Alumni Association, and Dr. Stacy Pierce Talsma, our Associate Dean of Academic Affairs. On this side, we have Dr. Amy Callahan McPhillips, who's our program speaker and a fellow alumni, and Dr. Mark Schenke, the chair of our faculty assembly. We're all very pleased. Yeah, go ahead, give them a round of applause. <laughs> that was for me, right? No, I'm just kidding. <clears throat> An institution of higher education is only as good as our faculty and professional staff. And it really is my distinct honor to work with a group of colleagues who are outstandingly dedicated um, to our mission. And so I'd like all the faculty and professional staff to please stand and be recognized. Thank you. There are some very special guests in the audience today without whom none of the student doctors would be here. Would the parents of the students please stand and be recognized? <laughs> Thank you. You did a good job. <laughs> Seated in front of me is the class of 2027. Student doctors, today, when you step on this stage, everyone in this building will bear witness as you make a commitment. A commitment to a profession, to pledge service to society, and promise to make many necessary sacrifices to follow this path. That doesn't mean self-sacrifice, but you will make sacrifices. And the fact that you will make sacrifices, and often make them gladly, is what sets the role of a physician apart. Sacrifice is what makes your decision to do this a vocation rather than a career. The White Coat Ceremony was developed by the Arnold B. Gold Foundation to create a psychological contract of professionalism and empathy between students, doctors, and society. The first White Coat Ceremony was done in 1993 at Columbia University, and since then, they have been done all over North America and in 19 countries. We're very happy that you got into medical school, that you were one of over 4,000 students to do so at UNE. But this ceremony is both celebratory and reflective. Today, you will receive your white coat. And that white coat celebrates your achievement. But more importantly, your donning of this white coat is a public display of your commitment to begin the transformation from an individual who is striving for a personal goal to an individual who is committed to the service of others. So let me say that a little bit differently. 
By presenting you with the white coat today in front of all these people, the profession of medicine is accepting you into our community with the caveat that you will meet all of the expectations for service, compassion, honesty, and commitment that is placed upon us by society. By donning your white coat and signing that oath of honor, you are making a public commitment that you will meet those expectations. Society will increasingly grant you significant, and I do hope humbling, power and responsibility in your relationship to other people. Power and responsibility that comes with sacrifice and humility. This combination of success and sacrifice, power and service, is why medicine is a vocation, not a job. Throughout your training and into your residency, you're gonna grow in knowledge and skills. You will develop the qualities that will make you outstanding osteopathic physicians. However, for true growth, you must learn to value your strengths and recognize and accept your weaknesses. They're okay. You just have to acknowledge them. That's how you're gonna learn. You will develop confidence. You need to maintain humility. This is critical. You're gonna have amazing opportunities. You will achieve many successes and you're gonna experience loss and failure. This is true for everyone who wears a white coat. So you must cultivate the humility to recognize your own limitations, to listen to others, to ask for help, even when you don't think you need it, to learn from your mistakes, and to forgive yourself your shortcomings. Caring for others is a privilege, and to do so, you must also care for yourself. So student doctors, I ask you to take a moment to look around. Look around this room, it's filled with people. Don't look at me, you're looking at me. Look around the room. Everyone here is going to bear witness to your commitment today. And we are also making a promise to you that we're gonna support you. We know this is hard work. We know it takes determination and grit. And we are here for you, for your entire journey, wherever it takes you. Thank you. It is now my pleasure to introduce my boss, Dr. James Herbert. Um, Dr. Herbert has been an enthusiastic partner to the College of Osteopathic Medicine. I couldn't ask for a better colleague um, and, and friend, even though we argue a lot. He has um, supported <laughs> He has supported the medical school and, and the health professions and helped us to create bridges and strengthen bonds to improve health care, not just in Maine, but throughout the Northeast. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Dr. President Herbert. <laughs> Thank you, Dean Carrero, for those very kind words. Um, and I, in turn, will tell you, I've worked with a lot of deans, a lot of vice presidents um, at a number of institutions, and I will tell you all, you could not ask for a better dean of our College of Osteopathic Medicine than Jane Carrero. She is a, she exemplifies the phrase that big, big things come in small packages, and she is <laughs> truly a force of nature. So thank you and good afternoon to our UNE faculty, our professional staff, our honored guests, and especially our new students, student doctors. Um, I'd like to echo what Dr. Carrero said just a few minutes ago about our, our friends and family in Morocco. So I've been working on this all morning since we heard of the devastating earthquake. I'm very happy to report that all of our students, our faculty, our professional staff, and our related colleagues are safe in Tangier. Um, but there are many people, over a thousand people have lost their lives, and there's great devastation in the south central region of the country. We are, and I put out about an hour ago a statement to the UNE community, and we're looking for the ways that we can help our colleagues, because Morocco is in, in many ways our second home, given our campus there. So we'll be looking for ways that we can help. And, 
Dean Carrero talked about the theme of sacrifice and how you, this, this vocation, in fact, I would go more than say a vocation, it's a lifestyle that you've chosen. And it will, uh, there, there are many times you will sacrifice. Many physicians and other healthcare professionals right now as we speak are sacrificing in Morocco to help the, the people, the communities that have been devastated there. And there will come a time when you will have your opportunity to help as well. And I know that all of you will make that sacrifice as well to help your own communities. So thank you. And on happier notes, it's, a, it's my pleasure to welcome and to congratulate the newest members of the UNE community and of course their families. Members of the class of 2027, you've worked very hard to achieve your goal of entering medical school. And not just any medical school, but the country's best medical school. <laughs> And don't get me started on explaining why I believe that statement to be true or else we'll be here for a couple of hours and with me going on and on on my soapbox. So I'll refrain, but I do believe that. Today marks uh, a transition in the way you'll be viewed by the public and the way that you should view yourselves. Beginning today, you're no longer merely students, you are student doctors. And when someone hears the term student doctor, there's a different level of expectation. One which assumes a very high level of integrity, dedication, and maturity. In addition to knowledge and skills acquisition, a student doctor is also someone who's learning how to listen, how to learn from their mistakes, and, as I said before, how to make sacrifices. With this in mind, today you'll join the ranks of many talented, hardworking medical students who've come before you. And the path you've chosen to follow could not be more important. More than 40 years ago, this college was created by a group of osteopathic physicians who wanted to ensure that the people of New England received the best possible medical care. At the time, many osteopathic physicians were reaching retirement age. Failure to replace them would have represented not only a loss to the profession, but more importantly, to the patients who had come to rely and depend upon osteopathic care. So, a group of physicians worked to establish an osteopathic medical school to serve the six New England states, and the College of Osteopathic Medicine was born. In 1978, it welcomed 36 pioneering students and 12 faculty members to a newly renovated Stella Maris Hall. Today, our College of Osteopathic Medicine continues to be the only medical school in Maine and in northern, the only osteopathic medical school in northern New England. And it offers some of the very best medical education facilities in the nation, while enrolling near, nearly 700 students and employing more than 250 faculty members. It has been recognized for excellence in primary care, geriatric education, and osteopathic manipulative medicine. Meanwhile, as the college has evolved, UNE has grown to become a world-class university that also trains other healthcare professionals, including dentists and pharmacists, just to name a couple, to create the healthcare teams of tomorrow. Our medical students are among the best and the brightest in the country, and you are in high demand. Thanks to the reputation former students have earned, our current students do quite well in procuring their top choices of residency programs. Our graduates also rank high for mean scores on all three parts of the National Osteopathic Licensing Exams. Students, by the time you graduate, you will possess the expertise and knowledge to succeed in any area of the medical profession. Over the course of your years with us, you'll gain experience in team-based care and, cr and clinical experience in a wide range of primary care settings. You'll be ready to work with diverse populations and to provide the highest quality of care. And more than that, you will forge another important link in the enduring legacy our students and faculty have built through the decades. During a period of great change in medicine and medical education, the UNE College of Osteopathic Medicine has remained true to its core commitments of putting the patient first, caring for one another, the community, and the environment, and creatively shaping the future while preserving the profession's past. These principles have molded generations of students into leaders at the local and the global levels. 
and they will, no doubt, mold you too. So again, welcome to the UNI family. I wish you nothing but the very best as you continue the exciting journey that lies ahead. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, President Herbert. At this time, I would like to introduce Dr. Jody Herman, President of the Unicom Alumni Association, as well as the Maine Osteopathic Association. Dr. Herman is board certified in internal medicine and in osteopathic neuromusculoskeletal medicine. She practices as a hospitalist um, in Augusta, and in her spare time, she works with athletes at various levels, from high school to the Olympics. Dr. Herman. All right, first off, thank you, Dr. Ferreira, for lowering the mic for me, <laughs> because he's way too tall. Anyway, hello. Uh, welcome. Welcome to your first year of medical school. You've had already started classes and are beginning to know what your new routine will be like. You have knowledge from your previous education, and now you will start to really focus on osteopathic medicine. You have also made a lot of accomplishments, but now you are headed toward what you claimed was your ultimate goal, to be an osteopathic physician. So welcome. You will grow in many ways and learn many things. You will wonder how you got here, and then you will wonder how you're going to get to graduation. There will be plenty of growth in between here and there. We are all happy that you've been working hard to move towards this direction and in the long run, join us in this wonderful and honored profession of osteopathic medicine. A bit of advice from somebody who's walked in your shoes. First off, all these people on the stage work tirelessly for you, all these people, and they will continue to work tirelessly for you, for your success, so use them and thank them. Listen to what you're being taught Listen to what you're being encouraged to be through others' reflections of you. Build your knowledge base and your skill set. Know your knowledge base and your skill set. Understand, when you get feedback or observations of who you are and what you do, you may feel uncomfortable or strongly object to it, but it is at that time you have the opportunity to grow. It's your responsibility to use this information Reflect on those points, integrate it with who you are and what you do. Make adjustments, improve on yourself. You will be challenged to understand medicine, apply medicine, and help us to improve on medicine during your years in medical school, residency, and practice. You'll be happy at times and sad at times, but it is your commitment to it that makes it work. So what I'm saying is own it. As you move through your path, show us. Show us. Show us that you do know all the medical knowledge that you've been taught. Show us that you do know how to work with the patient, other physicians in the medical community. Show us that you have a purpose and direction. Contribute and commit. Don't complain and whine to us about the pain of your growth. Be an adult, be mature, grab the bull by the horns, and take the information and feedback and do something productive with it. Show us that you know how to problem solve. Show us that you know how to mature and meet the needs of your community with being part of the solution, not the problem. Always be constructive, even if it is breaking something down to bring it back up. Don't rely on others and technology. An example you are all aware of is COVID-19. COVID-19 had no history. It did not follow the norms. It challenged us to think, to put pieces together, and trust each other to try to help people stay alive while they were taking their last breath. By my observation, it was simple to see. The newer physicians panicked, they didn't know how to handle something unknown without a template, studies, data points, or information. The established physician sat back, didn't panic, and made observations. Thought of pathophysiologic mechanisms versus normal, chose possible treatments, followed patient successes versus failures, 
and started research and development and finally had some success. So listen up. <laughs> if this is the only part that you hear, please choose to be on the side of thinking. Please continue with dedication, fortitude, and clarity about what you are saying you want to do and what you are actually doing. It can literally mean life and death. It's your choice. We, as practicing physicians, want nothing but the best for you, including your training, growth, and success to carry this profession forward in the best way that you can. We're depending on it. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Herman. <clears throat> New England's College of Osteopathic Medicine plays an important role in addressing the primary care and rural health needs of this state, the Northeast, and the country. Almost 60% of Unicom graduates enter primary care, and of these, over 40% practice in rural and underserved areas throughout Maine and the Northeast. We're very proud of the impact we have had in addressing the health care needs of our state and our region. These successes would not have been possible without our founders. The legacy of service and commitment to the welfare of the community remains at the core of who we are at Unicom. One of our alumni, today's speaker, embodies this legacy of service and commitment, Dr. Amy Callahan McPhillips. Dr. McPhillips laid the groundwork for her medical career at St. Lawrence University where she obtained a bachelor's in English. For two years, she served as a clinical researcher at Beth Israel Deaconess. And while she was there, she shadowed one of our alumni, Dr. Bill Sieglitz. And it was her time observing and learning from Dr. Sieglitz that helped her make the decision that osteopathic medicine would be her vocation. So she came to Unicom in 2015, where she worked really hard, just like all of you guys, both inside and outside of the classroom. Dr. McPhillips served as the SGA vice president. She was a teaching assistant in OMM when I was the course director, which was great. I loved it. She was a neuroanatomy TA for Dr. Willard. She completed a Peter Morgan research fellowship with faculty, uh, the biomedical science faculty. She was elected student doctor of the year, and she was awarded the Department of Osteopathic Manipulative Medicine Recognition Award. You'll see from her bio in the program that it wasn't until her third year of medical school that she decided what path she was gonna take, that she couldn't imagine being anything other than a family doctor. So see, you don't have to worry about it now. You don't even have to think about it yet. The very next year, her dream became a reality when she matched at the family medicine program at Brown University, which is not an easy thing to do. In the fall of her intern year, she married her husband, Michael. And I think this weekend's your anniversary, right? That's very nice. Congratulations. <laughs> so as a newlywed and a new resident, Amy discovered her passion for caring for underserved populations. And she came back to Maine and completed a rural health track at Mount Desert Island Hospital in Bar Harbor. And then, as a third year resident, she and her husband welcomed their first child, Maeve, on Christmas Day. So today, Dr. McPhillips is an assistant professor of family medicine and, an, and the associate program director of the osteopathic recognition program at Albany Family Medicine Residency. She still has a comprehensive patient care load. She teaches. She's a champion of osteopathic medicine. And her enduring commitment and service are a testament to her dedication to patients and to the profession. She's a mother, a physician, assistant professor, and a program director. And I've got a dog, and I think that's hard in the morning. <laughs> and he takes care of most of his own stuff. We asked Amy to speak with you this year because it's not always easy to find balance in a vocation that asks so much of us. And I think even as a student, that was one thing that many of us in the faculty saw. Amy figured out how to find balance. And so I'd like to welcome one of my favorite students, Dr. Amy Callahan McPhillips.
Thank you, Dean Carrero, for your kind words, and welcome, class of 2027, to your white coat ceremony. Do you feel like Mainers yet? <laughs> I like to think that part of me is a Mainer at heart, and not just because I've eaten my fair share of lobster rolls. You guys know from last night, right? Today, I'm going to take you briefly alongside my journey, how Maine has shaped me into an osteopathic family medicine physician. But more importantly, I want to highlight three words that I hope you will reflect back on throughout your medical school careers and beyond. Relentlessness, resilience, and relationships. My story with Maine began when I was only 17 as a rising senior in high school after volunteering for a week at Camp Sunshine in Casco, a retreat for children with life-threatening illnesses. During that experience, I grew curious about the medical conditions that were ailing the children I met, and I wondered what future role I could play in the lives of children in need. I had no idea that several years later, this curiosity would develop into a love for osteopathic medicine at an exceptional school, only a short drive away. Now, class of 2027, close your eyes. What ignited your interest in medicine? Remember the process of getting into medical school. The exams, the personal statements, the applications and secondaries, the fees, the interviews, the rejections, and ultimately, the acceptance. You had to be relentless. Open your eyes. Look at your classmates. These are the people who will be bonded to you for the rest of your life as you undergo this journey together as a unit. Look at your family, your loved ones, and those who are cheering you on from afar. They're your biggest fans, and they couldn't be prouder of you today. And finally, look at this stage. These faculty have made it their lives work to teach you and mold you into compassionate, intelligent, honest, osteopathic physicians. I urge you to lean on them, respect them, and trust them. Sometimes it will feel like they're being relentless, but it's for a reason, and it goes both ways. Relentlessness pays off. Eight years ago, I pulled into the Holiday Inn here in Portland as a prospective medical school student for a Unicom information session. Little did I know, I would meet another prospective student who would become my roommate, best friend, and maid of honor at my wedding. I hadn't done well on the MCAT and was told repeatedly that my chances of getting into medical school were slim. You shouldn't even bother applying this cycle, just retake the MCAT. I heard these words, yet I was determined to succeed. I refused to believe that a silly standardized test would prevent me from pursuing my dream. However, I was waitlisted. I continued to express my interest, and alas, another month went by, and I received my acceptance letter to Unicom. For those of you who fear you're undeserving of being here, you're here for a reason. There was no mistake. Your colleagues and your patients need you. My love for Maine grew stronger as I matriculated here in 2015 and Dr. Frothingham placed my first white coat on my shoulders. I was enveloped by the beautiful rocky coast and salty air and felt lucky that I could learn the brachial plexus while lying on a beach towel with my toes in the sand. <laughs> Enjoy the warm days while they last. There were many late nights spent in the library in Leonard Hall, drawing out the neural pathways for Dr. Willard's neuroanatomy course while contemplating having just one more cup of coffee. As a neuroanatomy teaching assistant in the beginning of third year, I was paired with a gentleman who, for HIPAA reasons I will call Jack, from River Ridge Rehabilitation Center. He had endured a massive stroke that resulted in left-sided weakness and nearly global aphasia. Our assignment as teaching assistants was to learn about the individual we were paired with and dive into his or her history, both clinically and personally. When we met, I quickly realized that communication would be our greatest struggle. 
His comprehension and expression of language were poor, and I felt defeated because I feared it would be impossible to understand his story. I found myself constantly searching for ways to connect with him, and finally I turned to technology, an iPod, iP iPad as my aid. One day, I attempted a game of tic-tac-toe. Initially, he simply copied whatever letter I wrote down rather than alternating X's and O's. Then in the middle of the game, he looked up at me and smiled, as if he suddenly realized what was happening. From that point forward, he played the game perfectly. Jack embodied resilience. He never gave up, and he taught me the importance of never giving up on my patients. Resilience. Resilience is misunderstood. People often feel it's an innate characteristic that can't be learned or taught, but I disagree. Every day, we are challenged to be resilient, and we have a choice of how to respond to difficult situations. There will be times throughout your training when you will be given tough feedback, sometimes feedback that seems impossible to absorb or overcome, whether that's a failing grade on an exam or an evaluation from a professor or attending about your clinical performance. Act on the feedback. It will make you a better physician. Sit down with the professor and walk through the exam to identify knowledge gaps. Meet with the attending to practice your oral presentations. The other part of resilience that is underrated is knowing when to take a step back. When you're overwhelmed, close your textbook and walk away. Go for a jog along Hills Beach Road. Grab a beer and a slice at Portland Pie with your friends. Take a weekend to ski at Sugarloaf. The textbooks will be waiting for you when you return, I promise. Continue to nurture the part of you that exists outside of medicine, whatever that is. Again, my connection to Maine deepened after volunteering to pursue the rural health track of my residency program, which took place at Mount Desert Island Hospital in Bar Harbor. There, I worked alongside a fellow Unicom alumna, Dr. Catherine Gassman, and realized that full spectrum family medicine and teaching were my vocation. I hiked dozens of trails in Acadia National Park during my time there, and the beauty of the Maine landscape provided solace amidst the chaos of the pandemic. It was in Maine that my husband and I discovered I was pregnant with our daughter, Maeve. So, needless to say, Maine permanently resides in a special corner of my heart, and I'm honored to be back in Maine and here with you today to share in the tremendous commitment you are making to yourselves and to each other. Medicine will try to break you at times with its emotional intensity. You will tell patients that they are dying, and you will hold their hands as they take one final breath, but their families will remember you as the face of comfort during their grief. Do not underestimate how you make others feel with just your presence and demeanor. Trying to balance the rigors of work with your personal life is often the hardest part of a career in medicine. For me, one of my most challenging hurdles was postpartum life following the birth of my daughter as a third year resident. The baby blues were real in those first two weeks, and I was surprised by the wide range of emotions I was experiencing, even though I had counseled patients about these same types of feelings many times before. I didn't know why I was crying, why I was laughing, and I struggled to feel like myself again, despite how overjoyed I felt to be a new mom. Don't be afraid to ask for help when you're feeling lost. I turned to my partner, my family, my friends, and my mentors. That experience really humanized motherhood for me and has allowed me to not only better relate to the patients I care for, but also be a stronger advocate for them. As the osteopathic oath states, I will be mindful always of my great responsibility to preserve the health and the life of my patients to retain their confidence and respect, both as a physician and a friend, who will guard their secrets with scrupulous honor and fidelity. This is your charge. You will form relationships with your patients that will sustain you on those demanding days of your careers. One of the most important relationships you'll have has already been formed, and that's with your donor in the anatomy lab. 
I often think of my donor and her selfless gift, giving her whole body and spirit so that we could become competent, caring physicians. Your donor is your first patient. Absorb all that your donor is trying to teach you. Relationships will ground you throughout your medical school experience. As I alluded to earlier, I made some of my best friends in medical school. Your classmates are the people who just get it. Be vulnerable with them. Share your fears and your self-doubts because I guarantee they are feeling them too. My classmates are the people I turn to when I've had a rough clinical day or when I need to troubleshoot a difficult diagnosis. I encourage you also to form relationships with your faculty. Find a mentor who will challenge you to be realistic about your goals, but also dream with you. As a faculty member myself, you have no idea how much joy it brings us to watch you succeed. And finally, lean on your existing relationships, your partner, your parents, your siblings, your extended family and friends. They know you better than anyone, and they're often the voice of reason when nothing seems to make sense. Close your eyes again. Imagine who you will be in 10 years, what kind of physician you might be, and the lives you will touch. Be human, and don't be afraid to let your patients see your humanity. The next four years will shape you into an osteopath, a healer who views patients in their entirety rather than just their diagnosis. Be relentless. Practice resiliency. Depend on your existing relationships and forge new ones. Trust the process. Write your own love story with Maine. Congratulations. So we we have a little prezi, oh, so and and something nice is coming in the mail, but it's been delayed. But I want to tell you guys one thing because I never told you this. Uh -oh. So about three years ago, I got a phone call from one of my dear dear friends. Her father had passed away after a long illness, and the reason she was calling me was because Amy was the resident that had been on duty and had stayed extra to sit with them while her dad passed away. Isn't that wonderful? It was so sweet. I never told you that. Yeah, I never knew that story. Oh, so sweet. I loved you. I love getting phone calls like that. Not that somebody's died, but that, you know. Levity is important. OK. Would Abigail Blake Sheehy, Ryan Burke, Caroline Yeager, Stephanie Perre, Nida Ritt, Hannah Stein, Carly Theberge, and Amy Wysong please stand? These eight amazing young women are pre-doctoral fellows. They have shepherded the students through the past few months and will continue to support them throughout their educational experience. As pre-doctoral teaching fellows, these folks extend their academic training by an additional year and they serve as basically junior faculty, instructors in the clinical and anatomical sciences, participating in research projects and caring for a patient panel. As fellows, they bridge the world between faculty and students, and they serve as teaching partners and mentors for those in the class of 2027. Please join me in recognizing their collective efforts. Would the fellows please escort the students to the stage for the presentation of the white coat and the signing of the oaths. Benjamin Aronson, Dartmouth, Massachusetts.
Mariam Mustafa Abdulmula, Jersey City, New Jersey. Vincent Paul Anyo Adarme, Union City, California. Mahal Evangeline Alvarez Bacchus, Lancaster, Massachusetts. Pandelis on the new, Syracuse, New York. Anna Audley, Creston, Pennsylvania. Erin May Dongwa Bakasin, San Diego, California. Kylie Balargin, Colchester, Vermont. Angela Balowing, Southington, Connecticut. Julia Barasevich, Danvers, Massachusetts. Sarah Barney, Atkinson, New Hampshire. Ashley Bartlett, South Burlington, Vermont. Jonathan Batson, Pompano Beach, Florida. Kaylee Beecher, Wells, Maine. Lillian Bennett, Lincoln, Massachusetts. Jennifer Berkowitz, Wayland, Massachusetts. Matthew Besner, Auburn, New York. Shanjata Buyan, Queens, New York. Hayden Bickley, Layton, Utah. Catherine Beagle, Standish, Maine. Alexa Bigelow, West Gardner, Maine. Wyatt Blackstone, Greenville, Maine. Morgan Blaney, Milford, Massachusetts. <laughs> M 
Mackenzie Brady, West Milford, New Jersey. <laughs> Olivia Braga, Cranston, Rhode Island. Catherine Butler, Tewksbury, Massachusetts. <laughs> Catherine Kama from Salt Lake City, Utah. <laughs> Neil Canastra, Dartmouth, Massachusetts. Dalton Canonico, Auburn, Maine. Marissa Canty, Comac, New York. Amanda Chaole, Cache Valley, California. Juliana Chen, Milton, Massachusetts. Sabrina Ray Chen, Hong Kong. <laughs> Shelley Chen, Queens, New York. Jonathan Chong, Queens, New York. <laughs> Nicholas Corda, Trumbull, Connecticut. <laughs> Sloan Coughlin, Ridgefield, Connecticut. Emily Chris Fola, Rainham, Massachusetts. Michael Dominic Cabello, Glenmont, New York. Catherine Curtis, New Paltz, New York. Liliana DaCosta, East Hanover, New Jersey. Karina Davidson, Nashua, New Hampshire. <laughs> Dominique Denbo, Windsor, Connecticut. Parker and Dylan from Danbury, Connecticut. Woo! 
Aisutu Jalu, Guinea, West Africa. Jasmine Dobrov, Brentwood, California. Sai Krishna Dhonepudi, Lumberton, New Jersey. PJ Donnelly, Holliston, Massachusetts. Riley Dunning, East Quag, New York. Pavania Elavalahanad, Guelph, Canada. Paulina L. Hayek, Chicago, Illinois. Jack Elrod, Lenox, Massachusetts. Steve Vermer, Corvallis, Oregon. Labina Faizizada, Wardag, Afghanistan. Devin Fakrizade, Fort Collins, Colorado. Gavin Faulkner, Hopkinton, New Hampshire. Meredith Fenn, Dexter, Maine. Caitlin Flint, Glastonbury, Connecticut. Harry Fogel, Providence, Rhode Island. Winnie Galogli, Milani, Hawaii. Jericho Venom, Queens, New York. Rachel Naomi Glasser, Guilford, Connecticut. <laughs> Lindsey Gray, Florida, Massachusetts. Anna Griffin, Scarborough, Maine. Oh, 
Sri Lakshmi Garala, Phoenix, Arizona. Elizabeth Hamilton, West Harridge, Massachusetts. Jason Hansen, Messina, New York. Darshana Hari, Wilmington, Massachusetts. David Harvey, Del Mar, New York. Joel Harvey, Lexington, Massachusetts. Hassan Hassan. Um Durman, Sudan. <laughs> Christina Ham, Pauling, New York. Jacob Popalian, Fresno, California. <laughs> Joseph Horst, Reading, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Irina Hrenik, Rochester, New York. Ashley Herrera, Queens, New York. Riyath Adnan Idris, Syracuse, New York, by way of home, Syria. Casper Iwanowski, Queens, New York. <laughs> Jessica Tony Johar, Norwood, Massachusetts. Jenny Murray Job, Johnson, Rhode Island. <laughs> Gail Johnson, Portland, Maine. Jensen Jose Kaithamettam, North Reading, Massachusetts. Mary Kanzler, Woodstock, Vermont. <laughs> Jonavi Kapadia, North Attleboro, Massachusetts. David Aaron Karp, Palm Beach, Florida.
Christopher Keck, Canandaigua, New York. Carly Kernstein, Richmond, Virginia. Joseph Khalifa, Portland, Oregon. Mehdi Khan, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Sonia Khan from Dallas, Texas. Olivia Killale, North Andover, Massachusetts. Christina Cotagenis, Reading, Connecticut. Caitlin Colloway, New York Mills, New York. Aaron Quid, Eagle, Idaho. Corey LaForest Royce, Farmington, Connecticut. <laughs> Sophia LaFrance, Alfred, Maine. Brady Lamontagne, Kenny Bunk, Maine. Cindy Lamour, still in Massachusetts, from Akai, Haiti. Joe Wickham Landry from Cooperstown, New York. Tony Latif, Rocky Hill, Connecticut. Envy Lee, Paxton, Massachusetts. <laughs> Maddie Leopold, Woodstock, Vermont. Vincent Lee, Norwich, Connecticut. <laughs> Stephen Lynn, Alpton, Wisconsin.
Courtney Logan, Parsippany, New Jersey. Maggie Loisel, Lowell, Massachusetts. Julia Lopez, Portland, Maine. Kevin Lundorf, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Simona Lisakova, New York City, New York. Matthew Magyar Ng, Calgary, Canada. Rachel Marino, Situate, Rhode Island. Austin Marsilia, Richmond, Virginia. Emma Mather, South Kingstown, Rhode Island. Gabrielle McGeorge from Westerville, Ohio. Brooke McLaughlin, Gardner, Maine. Joseph McMillan, Monroe, Michigan. Michaela McNamara, Westminster, Massachusetts. Darby Melia, Marshfield, Massachusetts. Stephanie Merrill, South to Talk at New York. Father Lemire, Glenmont, New York. Naman Mohammed, Brooklyn, New York. I'm Octavio Mora, Riverside, California. Alicia Munch, Middletown, New Jersey.
Mortada Nejim, Quincy, Massachusetts. Vincent Nguyen, San Diego, California. Gabrielle Nuki, Portland, Maine. Amanda Opuebo, Boston, Massachusetts. Emanuele Paiva Oliveira, Belo Horizonte, Brazil, and Drake, Massachusetts. Madison Alawa, Bedford, New Hampshire. Henry Giovanni Ortiz, Claremont, Florida. Penley Kenna U, Lowell, Massachusetts. <laughs> Ashley Willette, Caribou, Maine. Sanjay Pai, Walpole, Massachusetts. Vishva Patel, Sharon, Massachusetts. Vasiliki Patioyani, Athens, Greece. George Petridis, Greenwich, Connecticut. Lu Pham, Nha Tran, Vietnam, and Quincy, Massachusetts. Ariana Pitaro, Norwood, Massachusetts. Jefferson Buron Passerio, Jameson, Pennsylvania. Haley Poulin, Burlington, Vermont. Caroline Pribble, Salt Lake City, Utah. Amol Ramadi, Toronto, Ontario. <laughs> Ali
Alexandra Ramirez, Bronx, New York, Dominican Republic. Allison Reeves, East Ham, Massachusetts. Grant Robicheski, Raleigh, North Carolina. Haley Roberts, West Hills, California. Jason Robostelli, Durham, North Carolina, originating in Lewiston, Maine. Carly Rosenberg from Northborough, Massachusetts. Corey Rezzo, West Greenwich, Rhode Island. Purnima Sachdeva, Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania. Emma Safran, Providence, Rhode Island. Sikhjit Shaquille, Queens, New York. Bethany Santo, Rochester, New York. Steve Scott, St. Paul, Minnesota. Amini Shah, Avon, Massachusetts. Christopher Shakespeare, Johnston, Rhode Island. Alina Shatrovka, New York, New York. Nazifa Sheikh, Queens, New York. Warrior Shrestha, Aldi, Virginia. <laughs> Sophia Adams Sylvia, Newport, Rhode Island. Kartika Singaravelu, Farmington Hills, Michigan. Chase Sisk, Virginia Beach, Virginia.
Kendall Smith, Brooklyn, Connecticut. Sarah Stevens, Avon, Connecticut. <laughs> Hannah Arthi Sudhakar, Trumbull, Connecticut. Sarah Swanick, Grafton, Massachusetts. Brandon Jeremy Swan Prung, Branch of Cucamonga, California. Katie Zamorello, Marble, Connecticut. <laughs> Emily Taylor, North Kingstown, Rhode Island. Alexandra Thomas, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Gina Torovzada, San Diego, California. Donna Tran, Mays Landing, New Jersey. Brian Tran, Newington, Connecticut. Sarah Trent, Hanover, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Jyotika Valirupalli, North Grafton, Massachusetts. Sandhya Valiapin, Lexington, Massachusetts. Colby Williams, Sanford, Maine. Jaden Wolf, Mesa, Arizona. Juan Suniga, Cape Coral, Florida. That one man, I mean, <laughs> everywhere he goes, people are just losing it. He is just, wow. Just one. 
And four years from now, it'll even be better. <laughs> right? Um, would Dr. Herman please return to the podium to read the, um, or give them the oath of okay, honor? You know, this time. yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> you know. All right, that was fun. Okay. Let's see. Today, you signed the Oath of Honor, which will be huge, no, I'm sorry, hung, in the Alphonse Center for Health Sciences as a daily reminder of the oral commitment you are making today. You will take the Oath of Honor in front of your family, friends, and colleagues. In four years' time, you will take the osteopathic oath and leave here as a doctor of osteopathic medicine. <laughs> Long before you've had the opportunity to take the osteopathic oath, you make evident this path you have chosen by how you conduct yourself, both in and out of school, and in how you interact with your colleagues, the manner in which you treat others, and in how you take personal responsibility for your actions. This is your oath of honor. Would all members in the class of 2027 please rise? They haven't taken the oath yet, so hang on to that. <laughs> All right, so please repeat after me as I read the Oath of Honor. In being accepted as a member of the Unicom family, I have entrusted the privilege to learn the art and science of osteopathy, a unique gift that I vow to share in promoting whole personal health, body, mind, and spirit. I acknowledge that honorable success in both academic life and in the practice of medicine requires an unwavering commitment to certain ethical and professional principles. <laughs> Therefore, I accept the high calling before me by vowing my allegiance to the following core Unicom values. Service before self. Service before self. Stewardship. Honesty, Honesty. Integrity. integrity, responsibility, responsibility. Compassion. compassion, respect, respect. Perseverance. perseverance. Can I hear an amen? amen. All right, great. <laughs> I publicly vow to commit myself to ethical, professional, and medical excellence, to uphold the letter and spirit of this honor code, and to encourage, remind, and expect my peers to do the same, that we might preserve the, the dig sorry, that we might preserve the dignity and honor of our school, our community, and our profession. Congratulations to you all. You can now look forward to the day when you take your osteopathic oath. Would the members of the class of 2027 please turn around and face the audience? Families, friends, physicians, and colleagues, it's my great pleasure to officially present the future physicians of the class of 2027. Thank you. Can you please be seated? So, student doctors, today you have heard messages from your future colleagues and peers, and there is one more constituency we need to have represented, and that is going to be from Dr. Schenke.
So, so for, for those of you who are naive to this, I always have to invite Dr. Schenke or nobody comes. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Carrero. Did you notice that I was the only one she didn't hug when she invited him to the stage? <laughs> And I bet she doesn't have one of those gift bags for me under the lectern either. <laughs> Good afternoon. Thank you. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, uh, you really should come to class more often for crying out loud. We've been at this for two months already. For those of you not wearing white that don't know me, I'm uh, Mark Schenke, I'm one of the professors of anatomy here, and by extension, I'm one of the reasons they've been so moody lately. <laughs> um, I'm, it's my privilege to represent the biomedical science faculty on the stage here today. And we are very, very proud of you. Um, I mean, we'd be more proud of you if you were home studying right now, um, <laughs> but we're still proud. And I guess when I say proud, like what I really mean is jealous. I get those words mixed up sometimes. Uh, we're jealous because we only get to wear white coats on Halloween and maybe as an overcoat for a white party. You all get to wear the white coats every day from now on. And when you do, it commands respect. Woo indeed. <laughs> that was not in my notes. Uh, it marks you as someone we can trust. Someone who can ease our pain and allay our fears. Someone who has empathy. You've been through block week. You know we don't have empathy. <laughs> That's why you get to wear the white coats, and we do not. I'm not only here to represent the biomedical science faculty today, I'm also here to represent your future patients. And to be quite honest, when Dean Carrero asked me to consider what it would be like to be your first patient, my first thought was, Maybe I should consider one of those religions that doesn't believe in going to the doctors. <laughs> and to be perfectly clear, I mean no disrespect to those religions. I mean disrespect to each and every one <laughs> of you. It's called tough love. You've got to earn my respect. That's Parenting 101. But think about that. Anyone on this stage could be your future patient. And I imagine that thought could be a bit jarring to any of you future obstetricians or neonatologists out there. <laughs> could you imagine having to turn to the joyful parents and say, congratulations, it's a... that. <laughs> but more seriously, anyone not going into pediatrics or ob that's ob to the layperson, um, might have me as a patient. I mean, right now you look up to me with reverence and awe and adoration. I know it's not really true, but just go with it. Um, but in a few short years, you could be walking into an examining room, and there I'll be. Johnny on, probably backwards like a bathrobe, belly hanging out. Never get that thought out of your, health, out of your head. You're, you're welcome. Um, and the moment our eyes meet... from that energy I gave you and histology will come flooding back and you'll want to run. I don't know if you want to run away or run at me with a blood out. Are you ready for this? Think about that. Anyone you meet, anyone in this room could be your future patient because here's the thing. I don't just teach about low back pain. I actually have low back pain. <laughs> that is not funny, you monsters. What's wrong with you? Dr. Wheeler doesn't just teach you about the brain. There's something seriously wrong with his brain. <laughs> Dr. Vaughn doesn't just teach you about bugs. He bugs the crap out of me. <laughs> Dr. Skelly doesn't just teach you about drugs. He actually has a very serious problem with, well, <laughs> I guess that's kind of where the analogy breaks down, but you see where I'm going with this. Right now, you look to us for knowledge and guidance, but it won't be long before we're looking to you for knowledge and guidance. 
got serious in here all of a sudden. A couple of months ago, we introduced you to your first patient. Your patient was smelly. Your first patient was non-communicative, but that might be the most important patient you ever have. Never again will a patient say, hey doc, literally dissect me and learn all that you can. If you do to your second patient what you're currently doing to your first patient, you'll be serving time. <laughs> but your first patient was generous beyond comprehension to give you their corporal remains so that you could learn to be excellent physicians for your future patients. All of us on this stage believe you can be excellent physicians and we'll work our tails off to help you get there. Now I, want, I know you all want to get to cocktails and dinner with your, your families and loved ones, so I'll end with this. I wish to impart some advice for you to carry forward throughout your long and illustrious careers. Some variation of these words have been passed down in my family for generations and now you're part of our family. Excuse me, I get emotional at this point. <laughs> if you retain only one sentence from this entire program, let it be this. Don't. Don't. Do not get any of your dinner on your fancy new white coats. It's really hard to get stains out of white cloth. <laughs> Thank you and congratulations. Thank you, Dr. Shanky. <coughs> That's why I invite him. Um, this concludes the white coat ceremony. I'd like to invite everyone to join us outside for a reception in front of Merrill Hall. I'll ask that the family and friends, you remain in your seats while the fellows escort the students out of the auditorium. And I ask that the students wait until the platform party leaves because um, we're a little bit slower than you guys are. Thank you all for joining us. Good luck. You're going to wait for us. And um, we are so glad that you have, that you made the choice to become a member of our calm family. Thank you. <laughs>